Now coming to the treatment. The aim is to treat the underlying cause and manage the cardiovascular and systemic effects. The shock management can be categorized as fluid therapy, supportive and medications. Fluid therapy includes infusing NS at the rate 10 ml per kg, IV bolus and in cases if severe anemia then transfusing the blood will help. Supportive treatment includes addressing hypoxia, hypoglycemia, hypothermia, hypocalcemia and acidosis. The medications in the shock are further categorizes as inotropes, vasopressors and steroids. Now let's move ahead and see more about medications. Inotropes Dopamine It is the first line agent in treating neonatal shock. The action of dopamine is dose dependent as in dopamine less than 5 microgram per kg per minute causes peripheral dopamine receptors to stimulate which causes increased renal mesenteric and coronary blood flow. Dose of 5 to 10 microgram per kg per minute acts on heart and results in positive inotrop and chronotropic effect. Higher doses from 10 mic acts on alpha receptors of the blood vessels and causes vasoconstrictions and increase systemic vascular resistance. An important thing to remember here is that the dopamine needs prerequisite norepinephrine stores in order to act for long time. Hence, it is often preferable to add epinephrine in cases where dopamine is required for prolonged action or the effect is less obtained. Here again you can see the same mechanism that is why epinephrine in cases where dopamine effect is less obtained is added. Now let's see quickly see the review of the dose calculation for dopamine at 10 microgram per kg per minute dose. The 24 hours requirement of dopamine for 10 mic dose will be 24 into 60 into 10 which is equal to 1440 into 10. Now as we know 1 microgram is equal to 1000 of a gram hence it comes out to be 14.4 times the weight. Now, as we know, 1 ml ampule contains 40 mg of dopamine, hence the net amount in ml needed for 24 hours will be 15 times the weight divided by 40. Add this dose in the normal saline to obtain 24 ml solution and run this solution at 1 ml per hour to gain, get 10 mic dose rate. Let's move ahead. Dobutamine it is another important inotropic agent which is more cardioselective and helps in increased myocardial contractility. It decreases the systemic vascular resistance hence used as a second line. Another advantage of dobutamine is that it is not much dependent on norepinephrine stores for its action. The dose ranges from 5 to 15 mic. Let's move ahead. Coming to the epinephrine, it is a potent inotrop and chronotropic agent. The dose ranges from 0.05 to 0.3 mic. Note, at low doses, the epinephrine stimulates only the beta receptors, thus decreases the vascular resistance. Hence, it is often used as a second line agent along with dopamine to control the neonatal shock. The dose calculation is similar to dopamine but the difference here is that in the amount of ampule concentration that is 1 ml of dopamine had 40 mg of dopamine whereas the 1 ml of adrenaline is having 1 mg of it. Hence the dividing factor here is 100. Therefore for giving a dose of 0.1 mic we can use 15 times the weight and divide it by 100 for getting the dose of adrenaline for 24 hours. Let's move ahead and see some other important drugs. Milrinon. Milrinon acts by inhibiting phosphodiesterase enzyme resulting in increased intracellular camp activity improving cardiac contractility. Another drug that is vasopressin 
which acts by inhibiting the nitric oxide directed pathways thereby preventing the vasodilation although these drug aren't much studied but may be used in the situation where others measure fail hydrocortisone apart from the mineralocorticoid activity the corticosteroid helps in upregulating the receptors which got down regulated due to prolonged use of sympathomimetics it also decreases the catecholamine metabolism the recommended dose of hydrocortisone is 1 mg per kg per dose every 8 hourly for 2 to 3 days the summary of all the drugs important here are summarized in this table here is the algorithm for managing shock in very low birth weight neonates as you can see here we have divided in the four types and according to which the proper treatment is given this is the time wise management of septic shock in term neonates here you can see the there is time boundation in the management of shock in the starting we recognize the decreased perfusion cyanosis respiratory distress and maintain airway and establish the assess according to the nrp guidelines and at 5 minutes we push 10 ml per kg of isotonic crystalloid or the colloid boluses to 40 ml per kg until improvement of the perfusion or unless the hepatomegaly develops the correct hypoglycemia hypocalcemia and we begin antibiotic begin prostaglandin infusion until the ductin dependent lesion is been there Flu then at 15 minutes if despite giving multiple times the fluid there is no effect then we say fluid refractory shock and we start with infusion dopamine less than 10 mic per kg per minute with or without dobutamine if again there is no response then we say fluid refractory dopamine resistant shock and here we titrate epinephrine in dose of 0.05 to 0.3 microgram per kg per minute now we again monitor the patient if still no response is present and the condition further deteriorates then we assign it to as catecholamine resistant shock now we can divide the shock here as warm shock or the cold shock the cold shock in this the peripheral vasoconstriction occurs hence we can give a drug which is vasodilator like the milrinone or in the warm shock we can give the vasoconstrictor the peripheral svr improving drugs like terlipresin or the vasopressin or the norepinephrine now if still no improvement occurs then we can ascertain as refractory shock and we can give the hydrocortisone here if still nothing goes right and there is no improvement then we have to consider our last option that is ecmo extra corporeal membrane oxygenation comes to the end.